Hey guys, welcome back to another battle, and in this one I'm using my Tales of Symphonia Pass once again, and yet it is still named Dansk. But don't worry, I'm not gonna have any more continuity issues after these next several battles, because f after most of these battles, I'm just, all my passes are just gonna be named Boo. So if you ever see anybody named Boo on Wi-Fi, don't get too annoyed if I just give in on the first turn, because I actually tend to do that a lot. Like, when I know, without a doubt, that I will lose, I tend to just give in on the first turn. But, yeah, it, it helps me save time when I'm when I'm trying to get some decent battles, and I know people... Is this going to end up being, like, a narration or just a freaking rant? Um, I'll make it short. Usually, when people, whenever people say, it's like, oh, dude, I just got this awesome, like, creative Japanese trainer. He was awesome. He had, like, he had five ratatatas and a freaking... Uh, Mawile or whatever. And, you know, people always say that they get people like that, but the thing is, I never, I've never, i never gotten a single one, I don't think, in my entire battling, quote-unquote, career. I don't think I've gotten a single one, ever. So all you people that end up getting people like that, good for you. That's awesome that you're lucky enough to get people like that, but... One of the reasons why I end up, like, uploading battles with inexperienced trainers is just that I get people's table scraps. And those end up being uber noobs, OU noobs, and just plain old noobs. So that's why I tend to upload battles and stuff like that, and that's why I usually rant about, like, OU noobs and uber noobs and stuff like that. That's the main reason why I rant, at, like, on stuff like that. So... If you were ever curious about that, that's why. Because I always end up getting people like that. But anyway, back to the battle. Okay, got a sword. I, uh, let's see here. I sent out Infernape and Wawile. I protect, protecting something from the Crobat. And then I went for a sword stance. And then he swapped out Rotom for Gyarados to cut my attack. Then I went for a, um, Thunder Punch on Gyarados just to see what I can do. And I just barely, he just barely lives. And then Crobat goes for a Confuse Ray and kind of makes... He basically did a swagger on Mawile because I already had Sword Stance up. But uh, he goes for a Waterfall with uh, Gyarados and knocks me down to one hit left with uh, Infernape. Or Zellos, if you want to use their real names. And then um, he takes some damage from his Life Orb. Now that Gyarados actually ends up killing himself with his own Life Orb, so that's pretty funny. But uh, anyway... Uh, I go for... What do I go for here? I think I just go for a... Yeah, I go for Thunder Punch on uh, Crobat. Just because I knew that I needed to just... At, le at the very least, I needed to do something. Because, yeah. But anyway, Infernape outruns a Crobat, which is pretty impressive in my personal opinion. And I don't do very much due to the Intimidate. and But I, I luck out and I get Parallel Alice's Axe. And then he goes for Air Slash and knocks out uh, Infernape. Now, Air Slash might be a somewhat good choice on a Crobat. That's really only if you don't breed them, but it doesn't really matter. I, I guess it might not really matter if you even if you are playing to the special crowd, but it, it could still be useful. I mean, it is a pretty decently powerful flying attack. So, yeah. But anyway, it goes for Air Slash, knocks out Infernape, goes for Waterfall, knocks out Mawile, and dies to his own life orb. So, blah ha ha and now it's 3-2, to two, and I got uh, Gallade and Regal. I mean, uh, Hitman Lee. Or Lee... Wait, Lee Min Hit. <laughs> anyway, out comes Rotom again. Now, uh -huh. You know, I, it's kind of funny. That Pokemon is so very frail, but I always have a ton of trouble always bringing them down. It's really weird. But um, I always have so much trouble killing those things. I don't know why. But anyway, um... Go for Psycho Cut on Crobat, because I know that I can take it out, you know, because it's paralyzed and Gallade has insane physical attack. It's actually pretty surprising. If you ever need a good physical attacker, uh, I definitely use a Gallade, because he's actually really freaking powerful. It, it surprises me every time. But, uh, anyway. Go for Blaze Kick. Don't quite knock out Rotom, which is really unfortunate, because... Um, that, if I had knocked him out, I would have definitely saved myself some trouble against his last guy, which is coming out right now, because I knock out Crobat even through the Reflect, and he was well over half HP, so that's pretty good. And he has pretty good physical defenses, you know, for a bat, 
but whatever. Anyway, out comes his last guy, which is Azelf. Now, this is where things started to get pretty fun. I think I was laughing out loud toward the end of this battle. But I go for Shadow Sneak on Rotom. I was a little bit worried that I just would barely not be able to uh, knock it out. But my fears proved unfounded, as you will see here. See, I go for Protect with Hitmonlee, because I can't really do anything uh, substantial with him right now. And I go for Shadow Sneak with Lloyd. And then I knock out the Rotom, which is awesome. I was pretty worried about that. But I guess uh, having pretty, pretty dang good physical attack and a life orb is pretty good. So anyway, I uh, take a little damage from my life orb, and Azelf just happened to go for Hitman Lee, and I lucked out. So here begins uh, just nothing but spamming priority moves, because I knew that um, I knew that I wouldn't be fast enough to really take it out effectively. So this is where the Reflect really screwed me over, because, see, I go for Bullet Punch, it does nothing. I was really surprised, because I actually forgot about the Reflect. I was like, whoa, wait, wait, wait a minute. There's no way I only did that much. Because, you know, Azelf has craptacular defenses. So I was really expecting a ton more damage, but oh uh, well. So he goes for Thunderbolt for no reason. I'm not quite sure why he went for Thunderbolt, because he would have had at least Stab with Psychic. But um, anyway, I go for Shadow Sneak for about half a second, and then I rethink it and go for Protect. So now this is where things start to get fun. I, I like to think that this was a pretty good prediction, just because he was going for Gallade right there. And I, I was... I was pretty worried that he was going to swap to Hitman Lee for I don't know why, but I'm glad that he didn't. So he goes for Thunderbolt and went for Gallade. I protected myself, and then I get off my Blaze Kick finally. Kabam! Falcon Kick. And it still does nothing to do that stupid Protect. I'm going to guess that, I mean, even with a Protect, Azelf does not have the physical defense just to stand up to stuff like this, even with a Reflect. I mean, I'm sorry, but that thing is like glass. But anyway, I go for another bullet punch, and um, yeah, the battle is very close to ending, as you can see. Even if he, even if I didn't knock it out with this next shadow sneak, he would have died from his own life orb damage. The only way he could have won this, and even then he would have lost, would be if he used explosion. And he wouldn't have enough time to, oh wait, no, like if he survived the shadow sneak. But he would have lost then anyway, because I'm pretty sure you lose if you, even if you kill two Pokemon, the last two Pokemon with Explosion, which I think that's kind of a dumb rule. I think it should be a draw if you do that, but whatever. Anyway, I'll see you next time.